Ba or Ladukpo. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Let's start with the headlines. Welfare officers and men of the armed forces in focus as church services across the country mark the annual Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration. Nigerian Geological Survey Agency sets the record straight on alleged earthquake in Abaji. Is there any earthquake in that? We haven't experienced this before. This is the first time that we are hearing from you people that there's something of that nature. Burdna State Governor Babagana Umar Zulum visits IDP camp, donates sleeping materials to over 1,000. Wife of Kebi State Governor Aisha Atikuba Gudu leads ongoing advocacy to take 20,000 Al Marjorie children off the streets. details of the news as Nigerian marks the annual Armed Forces Remembrance Day which is set aside to celebrate foreign uh, fallen heroes who died while fighting to ensure the country's territorial integrity. There is an increasing need to ensure the welfare of officers and men of the force. President of the Church of Christ in Nations stated this at an interdenominal service to mark the celebrations Ifanye Zumba reports. <laughs> The tenth line of Nigeria's national anthem reads thus, the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. This celebration, therefore, is to honor the men of the force who are at the forefront in the war against insurgency in the Northeast, militancy in the South-South, and other violence that has been rocking the nation simultaneously. If all of us in this nation will take responsibility, our armed forces, will not be enduring the pain they are enduring, the suffering that they are enduring. And I dump my cap for the armed forces. Many of them, many of them have been made, many of them have been killed, all because of passivity. Vice President of Nigeria, Yemi Osibajo, while commending the efforts of the armed forces, emphasized that they are not just fighting to preserve the Nigeria of today, rather their effort is to preserve the future of Nigeria. The heat, and the cold, and the rain, prepared to be maimed or killed, just to keep the enemies of peace and the opponents of law and order at bay. There was intercessory prayers for the executive and other arms of government. The Armed Forces Day is an annual event organized by the Ministry of Defense to honor the nation's fallen heroes who laid down their lives during the First and Second World War, Nigerian Civil War, peace support and various internal security operations. In Abuja, Ifang, Izumba, and Tinis. And Nigerians have also been urged to see the Armed Forces Remembrance Day as a constant reminder, reminder rather, of great uh, sacrifices the nation's ex-servicemen and gallant fallen heroes made to secure the unity of the country. And Chairman Christian Association of Nigeria, Benue State, Reverend Akban Lever, gave the reminder in Makodi at an international search service to mark the 2020 Armed Forces Remembrance Day in the state, Husseini Mohammed Issa reports. <laughs> This heralded the commencement of the interdenominational service for this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day. In attendance were the Chief of Staff, Benue State, Tawase Obundi, who stood in for Governor Samuel Otom, Chief Justice of Benue State, Justice Andube Kakan, as well as members of the nation's armed forces and paramilitary agents. Governor Samuel Otom, who read one of the lessons for the service from Psalm 108, verses 1 to 13, noted that one of the ways to keep the memory of fallen heroes alive is by donating generously to Emblem Appeal Fund. Then, as you send a word to the members of the Legion, 
those who have had the pension well and have retired now at home, to let them know that that labor cannot be in vain. We have kept the peace in Benue and we are going about our normal businesses. Bishop Mike Ongu and Venerable Isaac Mbu, among other clerics, led the congregation in prayers for the departed fallen heroes and the gallant living officers. The spiritual leaders here are of the view that there is still much that can be done to the fallen heroes beyond setting aside a day to mark the event. From NKST low level here in Mokudi, I am Hussein Mohamed Issa, NTN News. And also in Abiyakuta, the clamor for government to pay adequate attention to the welfare of officers and men of the forces as well as the families of the fallen heroes was also highlighted. This was in a sermon delivered by the Bishop of Viewa Diocese of the Anglican Church, Right, Honor, right Reverend Mike Oluwarombi, at a special Thanksgiving service of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day in Ogun State. Mohammed Adebowale reports. The tenth line of Nigeria's national anthem reads, The labors of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Given this, one would expect that, indeed, the heroes on whose blood and sweat the continued existence of this nation was built would not be quickly forgotten. But to the Bishop of the Yewa Diocese of the Anglican Church, Right Reverend Michael Oluwarumbi, the opposite seems to be the case, as most of these gallant officers and families of the slain ones were not been adequately catered for in spite of their sacrifices. Speaking in a sermon at the special church service to commemorate this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day in the state, he noted that only in an atmosphere of peace that Nigeria and Nigerians can have desired growth and development and called on agri Nigerians to always embrace dialogue as this is the path to a greater Nigeria. It affords us the opportunity to turn our past to the present day, to return our story in the process of nation building, so that we can identify our peoples. Governor Prince Wabiodun, while appreciating the gallant officers who lay down their lives for the continuous existence of Nigeria, also acknowledged the importance of adequate welfare and support for security personnel. He promised to do more in this regard and reiterated his administration commitment towards ensuring that Ogun State, under his watch, continue to enjoy relative peace. Presents us with a unique opportunity to appreciate all those men who are also living, the ones who are still living, the ones who have committed their lives to ensuring that we enjoy peace and security. We shall continue to support our living heroes. We we'll support them with the equipment. We we'll ensure that they are better motivated and we look after their welfare. The Remembrance Day celebration, which continues tomorrow, underscores the need to celebrate the heroism and sacrifices of security operatives who lost their lives in the line of duty to make Nigeria what it is today. In Abekuta, Mohammed Adebowale, NT News. Indeed, they are what being celebrated. And still talking about that, the appreciation of the Nigerian seven and ex-service men for their gallantry and sacrifices in defense of the nation and interdenominational church service held at the Holy Ghost Cathedral, Enugu. It was an opportunity for special prayers and offertory for these war heroes, the Nigerian Armed Forces and the three arms of the Enugu State Government, led by the Governor Ifanyi Egwanyi, were all at the special service. Susan Eze has the reports. The presence of the officers and men of the nation's armed forces, the Nigerian leader led by the State Chairman Emeka Iwesi, the State Governor Ifanyi Egwanyi, and other officials is indicative of the importance of this special service. Remembering and appreciating the sacrifice of the men and women who took the front line and stood in the gap in defense of the nation, according to the homilies Reverend Father Ambrose Ofodile, is the least the nation can do. As the armed forces remembers their special service coincides with the commemoration of the baptism of Jesus Christ, 
Reverend Father Fordile linked both to signify the remembrance of those who laid down their lives for mankind. He harped on the need for synergy among the armed forces and the cooperation of all Nigerians in sustenance of peace and unity in the country. There should be a synergy that should exist between these armed forces. It is the type of unity that is expected in our country, Nigeria today. A unity that exists even in diversity. The service officiated by Monsignor Chooks Obwene also had in attendance heads of other federal government agencies, including the Zonal Director, NTA Nugu Network Center, Benny Modi. I must commend the federal government for setting out a day to celebrate them. It just shows that their death is not in vain. There were special thanksgiving and prayers for the armed forces and widows of the fallen heroes. In Enugu, Susan as a NTA News. In traditionally various humanitarian activities organized in the days preceding Nigerians Armed Forces Remembrance Day marked uh, every 15th of January in honor of the falling uh, troops. Correspondent Najaatu Tijani reports of two of such activities organized by the Nigerian Army and the Defense and Police Officers Wives Association, the POA. It is easy to think these are traders in a marketplace. Far from it, they are widows of soldiers who paid the ultimate price defending Nigeria's territorial integrity. Now, the memory of their husbands lingers as they in turn are remembered by the Defence Headquarters and Defence and Police Officers Wives Association as part of activities in the run-up to the 2020 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. We believe very well that is going to go a long way uh, to assist the widows of our fallen heroes. This committee is the brainchild of the Chief of Defense Staff General Abayomi Gabriel Lawrence Shaking, who has seen the plight of our widows and decided to come to their help. In making life worth living for families of our fallen heroes who have laid down their lives for the security, peace, and unity of our dear country, Nigeria. Choma Omirwa, an award-winning comedian, understands the pain of these widows. Because it's something to just sort of like sometimes give words and say things, but what can we do to actually make an impact? While the memory of the departed remains painful for the ones left behind, the message is clear. They will not be forgotten. On a lighter note, the Nigerian army organized the West African Social Activities Rasa as part of activities marking the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. The steps for the display he's going to do. The bag of stand is up. Here we can see him taking the steps. And slow march. And it is the responsibility of all Nigerians to watch over these families because they are men and they are women or their breadwinners fell in the line of duty to secure our country, to secure other parts of the world, so that you and me can sleep in quiet and peace. The West African Social Activities has also become an avenue where convention and union showcase its achievement. In this note, I wish to state with all sense of humility that we have been able to achieve the brigade training objective for the year 2019. The activity is providing avenue for the soldiers to down arms and relax for a moment. Najaa Tijani, NTA News. All right, we now join our correspondent Dele Atumbi, who is standing by at the Supreme Court to give us an update of judgment on appeals from the 2019 general election of some states. Uh, Delhi, how many more uh, states have their appeal pending at the Supreme Court right now? Well, as at now, we have six cases pending before the court, uh, pending before the Supreme Court, and the seven-man panel of justices is headed by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad. And don't forget that uh, Bochi is having his case to be mentioned today. Kano, Sokoto, Plateau, Beno, and Imo states. Those cases are going to be.
very clear that in this appeal, there are three cross appeals. The first one is that the Kano State Governor, the incumbent Governor of Kano State, is cross appealing the judgment of the appeal court. And the Benue State Governor, too, who is equally in court, is cross appealing the matter before the Supreme Court. And the Plateau State Governor, Governor Lalong, is equally. The lawyers are going about the adoption now. After the adoptions, the court will give its judgment on all the six cases where the court is uh, sitting on it. So, Daily, what states appeal as slated for judgment today? Which ones are we expecting to hear from today? Well, all the six, one thing I'm sure of is this. With the Chief Justice of Nigeria sitting, as the head of the panel, one thing is sure that all the, all, the, all the cases will be adjudged today. Judgments have been expected on all the cases. All right, uh, Delhi, what's currently happening at the Supreme Court? At a point. Uh, what, what is uh, currently happening at the Supreme uh, Court? Well, at a point, the court... At the point the, the court was uh, crowded and the, judge, the, the, the panel had to, uh, had to rise and for them to put security checks in place. And the court has now resumed its sitting. Okay, Dele, thank you so much for the update. And do sure to keep us posted of events as they unfold from the Supreme Court here in Abuja. And moving on, we'll take a break now. We'll be back shortly with more news. Stay with us. Expects ongoing construction of security watchtower in just not local government areas. Details when we return. Many thanks for being there. The All Progressives Congress celebrates the President of the Senate and Chairman of the National Assembly, Senator Ahmed Lawan, on the occasion of his 61st birthday. The party describes him as a patriotic Nigerian, a diligent and experienced legislator, a loyal party man and a foremost progressive politician with enviable passion for the growth and development of the country. Adding that Senator Lawan has molded a Senate where the APC in the majority has been working harmoniously with the minority parties on common issues of national concern. The APC prays Almighty Allah to continue to grant Senator Alawan good health and wisdom to continue to steer the affairs of the Ninth National Assembly and that of the country. And similarly, President Muhammadu Buhari, on behalf of the Federal Executive Council and all Nigerians, warmly felicitates with Senate our President Dr. Ahmed Ibrahim Lawa on his 61st birthday. The president joins the National Assembly and all members of all Progressives Congress in celebrating the milestone which has been lined with many years of contributions to Nigerians' development. With fruitful years of lawmaking starting from the House of Representatives in 1999, the president affirms that Lawa's maturity was translated into the many achievements of the Ninth Assembly within a short period, including a harmonious relationship with uh, executive which recently and he historically saw a return to the uh, right budget uh, cycle at 61 the president believed the senate's president's rich experience as an administrator educator and lawmaker will go a long way in shaping policies that would directly impact on the livelihood of nigerians while commending his responsive and inclusive leadership style 
A statement from the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Gabriel who says President Buhari prays the almighty God to continue to guide uh, Dr. Lawa to provide strong leadership and grant him longer life and good health. And the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum and Governor of Plateau State, Right Honorable Simon Bakul Lalong, has, on behalf of the 19 governors and the entire people of the region, congratulated the Senate President, Dr. Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, on his 61st birthday. In a statement by Director of Press and Public Affairs to the Governor of Plateau State and Chairman Northern Governors Forum, Dr. Makut Simon Machem, Governor Lalong, in a message, rejoiced with the Senate President for attaining the age of 61 and contributing immensely to the political development of the nation through his many years of service at the legislature and elsewhere. Governor Lalong also expressed belief that the Senate President Senator Lawan's leadership of the Ninth Assembly will provide the much needed win win synergy necessary for a harmonious relationship with the executive and the judiciary to bring the dividends of democracy to Nigerians. He assured the Senate President of the continued support of the Northern Governors Forum and the people of the region. He wished Senator Lawan good health and God's favor in the years ahead. And in a bid to strengthen the security architecture in Plateau State and consolidate on the peace that is currently being experienced, uh, Plateau State Governor has inspected the ongoing construction of the first neighborhood security watchtower at Dusi Uku in Jos, North local government area of the state. Here's the report. Nolalong, who arrived the site and missed a rousing welcome by residents of the area, was briefed on the concept of the neighborhood security watchtower by the permanent secretary. Cabinet and Special Services, Mr. Cornelius Shiolbial, who explained that the project was geared at ensuring that there is an early warning system to preempt conflicts and nip them in the bud. He told the governor that the security team headed by the Operation Rainbow will run shifts and use the watchtower, which is well positioned to observe large parts of the city. Governor Lalong commended the initiative and said it was necessary as the government continues to make progress in consolidating peace by strengthening the security architecture for efficient and timely response. He also commended the quality of work which is being handled through direct labor using staff of the Ministry of Housing. The governor assured the people that the rescue administration will continue to encourage every effort that will ensure that the ugly crisis of the past remains a thing of the past. He warned all troublemakers to stay away from the state because the government will not hesitate to deal decisively with anyone found causing disharmony or beating the drums of war. I am here to reaffirm our commitment to all of you. Yes, sir. And to also say that peace is very cardinal in Plateau State. Yes, peace is cardinal in Nigeria. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All we need to do is this year, let us be number one in peace in Nigeria. Yes, and come after that. The Adagum is the area of Jos. His Royal Highness Ada Emmanuel Azik appreciated the governor for fulfilling his campaign promises by building infrastructure and also pursuing the path of peace and progress of the state. He promised the continued support of his subjects to the government to enable it discharge its responsibility to the citizenry. And now business news. Central Bank of Nigeria injects 253.38 million dollars into retail secondary market intervention sales its first intervention for the year 2020 let's join abdul karim zurmi on business news for details amidst constant sell-offs by offshore investors and nigeria's foreign reserves fell into a two-year low and dipping by 170.83 million dollars cbn sustained its interventions in the retail secondary market, selling $210 million across the different segments of the foreign market with 16.76 million Chinese yuan in the short tenured forward sectors. At the parallel market, the Naira strengthened across all contracts. One dollar exchange for 359 Naira at the Bureau de Change segment of foreign exchange market. In other market reports, oranges and potatoes dominate sales in the orange market Maraba one of the fastest growing markets in the Middle Belt, where produce such as onions and potatoes are also in high demand. It, it happened, I, my brother is selling in this particular market and he's doing fine. So I've searched for a job, I, why not join him since he's doing good? 
and I can see those things that is actually making him to do well, feeding his family, and he even built house with this particular business. So that may prompt me to join him in the business. Today, by the grace of God, I'm okay into business. I can I can't seek for color job. Let's be realistic. That is why I'm proud to be a businessman. And it's cheering news for airlines in the country. As the Ogbele $25 million refinery has been completed and operations kicked off to produce jet fuel within the country. This is sequel to President Muhammadu Buhari's approval for the expansion from 1,000 barrels per day to 5,000 barrels per day in 2018. With business news, Abdul Karim Zermi. And this is the News at 10 on NTA News 24 broadcast live from Abuja. Still ahead. Nigerian programs in Israel connect with the history of Galilee. Stay with us. Advertising your goods and services on the right channel. NTA, you can't be rich. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. service of the NDA.
to your favorite program, Entertainment Juice, where, of course, I bring to you all the juicy, spicy, enticing details about our entertainment industry, both here and abroad. My name is Cynthia Bayogo, and you're saying welcome, and thank you for joining us one more time. For today's edition, we have to begin with the just-concluded 19th Hedis Awards, which held in Lagos, Nigeria, and it was superb in capital letters. I mean, from the red carpet, where we saw the fashion fans, to the performances and to the winnings of the night. Everything was outstanding. Let's not forget about the hosts with the most. We're talking about TV personality Nancy Isime and Nigerian artist Reminis. Who would have thought? Like Nancy, Reminis coming together and in fact they did so well in holding that show down. For the red carpet, I have to say my best three Amazing female dressers just has to be Toke Makinwa, Messi, and Tacha of Big Brother. In fact, they broke the internet. They shattered it literally. Of course, Venita came with her A game, you know, with the old arty dress. It's a soft note, I must say. Kudos to all of them who graced that event. And even the artists who gave us amazing, intriguing performances for the night. But for the winning, I have to say kudos to Tenny Makanaki, whose real name is Tenny Apata, for winning four major awards. She won the Viewer's Choice Award for Uyo Mayo and Song of the Year for Case. We all know that that song is now Mike's song, Mike of Big Brother, because she also performed it alongside with Mike Edwards of Big Brother. Also, we saw Burner Boy go home with three awards and Faust the Bad Guy with three awards also. Mayako from DMW had two awards and the big win was for Maven Records. They saw their kid on the block, Rema, go home with the next rated award. Of course, this award not just comes with an award, it comes with a car. And that is why we were expecting the drama of years back between Don Jazzy and Alamide, the old egg boy, if it's the guy you want, come and collect it. But I mean, this year's Heidi was dramaless. But we love it, there was peace in the industry. So, yes, we look forward to more peaceful Heidi awards like this. We say congratulations to all the big winners for the night and to the organizers of the Harris Awards. But if you notice, we did not see the likes of Tiwa Savage, Whiskey, even Burner Boy who won an award was not present at the Harris Awards. Davido was not left out, Olamide, and even Naira Mali was not present. But you know what? I'll tell you why they were not there right after the highlights of the just concluded 13th annual Harris Awards for the year 2019. I go to court for your case. I climb the bridge for your case. Enter water for your case. I go to jail for your case. Say what? Anything you want, baby. Let's go. Yes, for you. One, two, 